Good afternoon everybody. Now I am really 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 looking forward to checking out this power station by Bluetti. Now what you're probably thinking power station we've seen a hundred power stations in thousands of power stations. Now this power station is actually a world's first. Basically it's like any other power station apart from its power source which is a sodium ion battery which is fitted inside it. So most other power banks or 95% of other power banks all use a lithium battery. Um, so the chemical element lithium is quite rare on earth to find and I think it's quite difficult to mine. We aren't going too far into it. Sodium ion as a mineral element, chemical element sorry is abun in abundance so there's a lot more of it about and I believe it's cheaper to mine not 100% sure but this has a sodium iron battery inside it so all the features on it will be the same as any other power station a lithium one but there is a difference now they have named it the Pioneer NA and it's quite interesting NA is the chemical symbol for sodium iron so that basically what they've done is they've used the NA off the chemical symbol for the, the batch technology what's inside this power station um, so what what's the difference what's the difference between sodium and lithium basically this will work in minus 25 C temperatures whereas lithium won't so it works even better like higher northern hemisphere in colder climates doesn't require battery warming technology the same so that that is one huge benefit of the sodium and i think a lot of things are going sodium now i believe they put sodium ions in cars now i think lithium will become a thing of the past as battery technology actually moves on um so charging this unit you can actually charge it with up to 1900 watts which is a combined um from the solar and the ac input and it'll charge it to 80 percent in 35 minutes which is really really fast to be fair so you don't have to do anything different than you would with a lithium battery station power station power bank whatever you want to call it nothing different it's the same kind of charger um, you don't have to use it any differently do anything different at all it's basically very very similar it's just a different chemical element uh, within the battery um, and they say the battery life in this is up to 10 years and 4,000 cycles roughly um, and then it'll start depleting a little bit. So very, very similar to lithium, um, the battery. It's got a good life cycle on it. Now the power output of this on the AC side is 1,500 watts. And it does have lifting power and a power surge to 2,250 watts. It also features a low standby power mode and it'll only use 1.5 watts per hour when it's on standby so it uses very very little compared to any other power station in its range and you can also charge this at minus 15 degrees whereas you probably can't with a lithium so there is a huge benefits of the sodium ion battery and it also there's a lot less risk of it overeating sodium ion technology compared to lithium technology there's a lot less chance of uh, overheating so I don't want to talk about sodium too much, but basically the sodium as a chemical element is in abundance on Earth compared to lithium. Um, I know you, you see some of the videos online of lithium mining, it's really bad. I'm not sure how it compares to sodium mining, but the, 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 it is more in an abundance and I think it's probably going to be all, everybody's going to be moving on to sodium technologies. Um, it does feature a 900 watt hour battery in this. So this basic unit is basically like a Blue 80 AC 180, but the capacities of it are slightly smaller because of the sodium battery. Now this thing weighs around 16 ki kilograms. Um, like I say, it's 900 watt hours. What does that mean? So basically, if you plug something in that uses 900 watts continuously, this will last for one hour. So obviously you're not going to be plugging things like that in, generally speaking, to something like this. It does have Bluetooth technology and you can put a maximum amount of 500 watts of solar in this. And another thing it does have on top is it does have the wireless charging capabilities. So you can put things like your phone on there, etc., to charge them up. Um, Around the sides, you've got your fan holes, nothing much to see there. Across the front here, I'll just bring you a bit closer. There, you've got your two AC outlets, you've got your on and off switch here, and you've got your DC on and off and your AC on and off. So we'll just switch it on, and hopefully you'll be able to see it. It's quite sunny today. I do apologize if you can't see it on the screen. 
Um, it's currently at 93%. We have been using it a little bit. It's got the same kind of display as all the other Bluetti power stations. So the four USB A's are all rated at three amps, and the USB C here is rated at 100 watts. You've also got a 10 amp, 12 volt outlet there, and you've also got a 10 amp, 12 volt, what we call a cigarette lighter plug there. So in the box it comes with what I really, really do like is a cigarette lighter plug so you can actually charge this in your vehicle while you're driving now it does use a different type of plug I'm not sure what they call that plug but that basically goes in there so it's an inlet and an outlet you've also got your solar connectors with the same plug on so you can also plug that in there as well so that's nice it comes with both of them and it comes with your standard kettle plug there is an actual name for them plugs I actually found the name of it once and I was like, I didn't even know it were called that. Everybody calls them a kettle plug, don't they? But yeah, it comes with that. And then it comes with your usual instruction book here. So we're gonna plug a few things into it and we'll see how noisy it is. We'll put some smaller stuff in it and we'll look at the uh, output readings. We'll also plug some higher stuff in and see if it's noisy at all, things like that. Right, let's uh, switch this unit on. We're gonna test out some of the features. Right, so we've switched it on, we're at 93%. And switch the DC on it's simply one touch same with the AC side one touch I'm just going to test out the wireless charging which is actually charging didn't come up when I plugged it on pushed it on hang on let's try that again yeah it's probably difficult for you to see the charging symbol there well, as you can see we are using around 8 watts on the wireless charging so I'll plug a few more things on obviously there's no noise whatsoever from this at the moment so actually something we do need to charge is one thing we do need to charge up really is our hoover so I will plug that in I don't think this will use a lot of power at all I'll plug that in I'll switch the AC sockets on I'm actually kind of intrigued to see how much power that uses um, currently 20 watts, 19 watts. Another thing that does want charging is my MacBook, so we shall pop that on charge as well. We can actually um, use the USB C socket for charging a MacBook. Well, I'll plug that in the A socket and we'll see if there's any noise. Can't hear any noise from the unit whatsoever. We're now pulling 100. 198 watts obviously this will go up to 1500 there's no noise whatsoever it's nice and quiet and it's also worth noting as well on the display not sure how well it shows up at the cut that current rate we've got around 9.6 hours um, obviously it won't take that long to charge these two items up but that just gives you a bit of an idea so one thing I'm actually interested in is how much difference it will make putting that in the USB-C compared to that. So let's just unplug that because I didn't think that used quite as much power. Because that's only using 20 watts. So that would say that's using 180. Am I right in thinking? Now this is set at 100 watts. So that should go to 120, 130. It is actually charging. Not sure how well that symbol lights up on the screen. So yeah, that's actually using about 100 watts. Right, so while that's actually charging, I will test out a pair of hair straighteners because I do find hair straighteners a good test for any power station because of the surge on the hair straighteners so we'll plug those in there um, familiarize myself with how to switch them on I think you're pressing on that button there yeah they surge to 1400 watts not sure if you can hear the noise just a little bit of noise as it fired up keep them stood up so they don't burn the side Obviously they're pulling a lot less power now, but when you first plug them in, the surge on them is quite high. If you see there, it just surged to 1200 watts again. They're warming up to 180 degrees. Not sure how well that shows up on there. 
So I can hear the fans inside this Bluetti Pioneer NA, but it's not over noisy. They're up to temperature now. Switch them off. And it goes quiet again. Right, we're going to test out uh, the Bluetti with our little kettle here, which uses about 650 watts, and we'll see if how it handles that and how many percent of take well, we're on 81 percent i have charged the macbook and they did charge that hoover and a few other things earlier put that on that's on now it's actually pulling 665 watts you can hear the fans it's not too noisy quite quiet oh and also around this end is where you charge it with a kettle plug and your protection buttons there then the earth point as well as there. Right, so a bit more of an extreme, we've got this Chef Free Air Fryer which is actually 1500 watts which this is the maximum output of this power station so we're going to cook a few chips uh, and see how it handles um, full power so we'll switch the power on move that away from the side pull it up to 200 degrees So the Bluetti is handling the air fryer no problem whatsoever. Oh, chips are done. Still got power left. So I'm quite impressed with this power station and I'm really looking forward to seeing how the, what the future holds for sodium iron technology and whether all power stations what come out in the future will feature sodium iron batteries. But I do want to thank Bluetti for sending me this power station and if you're interested in any of the other power stations by Bluetti, check out the links in the description below and I want to thank you all for watching as always and we'll see you in the next one.